Hi everyone, I'm Chloe Pogue, and today I'll be presenting our paper titled Multiple Curvatures in a Tendon-Driven Continuum Robot Using a Novel Magnetic Locking Mechanism. So continuum robots are dexterous small-scale devices which can be used to access tight, hard-to-reach areas, and their inherent compliance makes them well-suited to surgical applications. These robots are commonly actuated using tendons, which are routed along their body and terminate at the end of each robot segment. These tendons are actuated using motors placed at the base of the robot, which pull on the tendons to bend the robot. To navigate tortuous surgical paths, these robots must be capable of producing multiple curvatures along their bodies. Typically, to achieve multiple curvatures in the robot, these robots are composed of multiple separately actuated segments, as each robot segment can bend only with constant curvature. However, by adding robot segments, more actuating tendons must also be added to the robot. Adding these numerous onboard actuating tendons complicates the actuation unit due to complex tendon routing. It also results in a bulky actuation system and can increase the friction in the robot. Another method of achieving multiple curvatures is to use locking mechanisms. They're used to prevent relative motion between some of the robot's components, restricting the deformation in a portion of the robot, while the remainder of the robot can assume a different curvature. Locking mechanisms can therefore be used to produce multiple curvatures in a single continuum robot segment without the need for additional robot segments and actuating tendons. Two types of locking mechanisms exist in the literature, friction-based locking mechanisms and mechanical locking mechanisms. Friction-based mechanisms use high friction between robot components to lock a portion of the system. Yang Yal and Bishop Yal proposed locking mechanisms which use shape memory alloys. Uh, Kang Yao proposed a locking mechanism using piezoelectric um, actuation, and Wang Yao proposed a pneumatically induced locking approach. Mechanical mechanisms use mechanical interference between components to obstruct, obstruct motion. Zhu Yao used pins, which were engaged into the robot's backbone to lock its curvature. Uh, Wang Yao proposed a clutch-based uh, locking mechanism, and Sun Yao proposed a cam-based locking mechanism. In this work, we proposed a novel magnetically actuated locking mechanism placed on board a tendon-driven continuum robot to enable multiple curvatures in a single robot segment. Supporting components in the form of secondary backbones were also added to a typical tendon-driven continuum robot segment. The notch secondary backbones provide a structure onto which the magnetic locking mechanism latches, restricting the motion in the proximal half of the robot, therefore locking its curvature. The distal portion of the robot can then be actuated to create a second curvature in a single continuum robot segment. The use of magnetic actuation uh, allows the locking mechanism to be wirelessly actuated, thus eliminating the need for onboard electrical wires, which can help keep the robot slender. Additionally, magnetic actuation produces relatively large actuation forces. The small magnets can be used on board the locking mechanism for actuation, allowing the device to remain relatively small. So as I previously mentioned, the magnetic locking mechanism has an onboard magnet, which allows it to be wirelessly actuated. To switch the locking mechanism between its locked and unlocked states, an external magnetic field produced by an electromagnetic actuation system is used. When an external magnetic field is applied, the locking mechanism will rotate to align its magnetization direction with the externally applied magnetic field, creating a torque. These magnetic torques are used to engage or disengage the locking mechanism with the secondary backbones. To enable two curvatures in the robot, it's first bent by manually pulling on the robot's actuating tendons to create a first curvature. Then a magnetic field is applied to lock the proximal half of the robot, and the tendons are once pulled again to create a second curvature in the distal portion of the robot, as you can see here. The robot is then returned to its initial curvature and a magnetic field is applied to unlock the magnetic locking mechanism and unlock the curvature in the proximal half of the robot. The robot is then returned to its starting configuration. So in that portion of the video, you could see that the magnetic locking mechanism successfully enabled two curvatures in a single continuum robot segment in two dimensional space. And in this portion of the video here, you can also see that this magnetic locking mechanism can also produce two curvatures in a single robot segment in three-dimensional space. Uh, to ensure that the locking mechanism could be actuated while on board the robot, we measured the maximum field required to lock and unlock the mechanism. 
while the robot assumed different bending angles, and the field strength did not surpass seven millitesla. The tendon-driven continuum robot's motion capabilities could be further improved by adding multiple magnetic locking mechanisms on board the robot. For example, you could add two magnetic locking mechanisms um, on a single robot segment to enable three curvatures in the segment, as you can see in the figure on the right. So it was shown that uh, two magnetic locking mechanisms could be adjustably actuated using a global magnetic field. Uh, for the sake of time here, I'm only showing you one of the cases that we considered. However, we successfully demonstrated that uh, two magnetic locking mechanisms could be adjustably actuated for um, a large number of relative orientations between the locking mechanisms. So to conclude, in this work, a novel magnetic locking mechanism was developed, which enabled two curvatures in a single segment tendon-driven continuum robot. To the best of our knowledge, we also presented the smallest continuum robot with a locking mechanism used to produce multiple curvatures to date. Uh, in future work, we'd like to develop a kinematic model of the robot uh, to further analyze the proposed design. Uh, we would also like to automate the actuation unit so that uh, the vibrations caused by manual actuation can be el eliminated and the robot can be linearly advanced or retracted into a workspace. And finally, we want to miniaturize the robot by using custom magnets in the magnetic locking mechanism. So I want to thank my supervisor, all of the authors on this paper, as well as the members in my lab for their continued support. Thank you all for attending my talk, and I'm happy to answer your questions.